Welcome to this in-depth session about mesh generation in the computational geometry algorithm library. My name is Sébastien Loriot and I'm going to explain you how the Delaunay triangulation is used to generate triangle meshes in both 2D and 3D as well as theta hydra meshes in 3D. Finally, I will present a method to improve the quality of theta hydra meshes that is using iteratively atomic operations in the mesh. But for now, let's focus on the generation of 2D triangle meshes. First thing first, what is a Delaunay triangulation? Let's take the 2D case as the definition in higher dimension is similar. Given a triangulation of a set of input points in the plane, this triangulation is said to be Delaunay if the circumscribing circle of each triangle does not contain any point in its interior. Delaunay triangulation are particularly interesting because for a given point set, its Delaunay triangulation is guaranteed to maximize the minimum angle over all possible triangulations. In the context of mesh generation, having a minimal angle not too small is often a prerequisite. A 2D constrained Delaunay triangulation is a triangulation where some hedges are imposed. It also has the empty circle property, but points behind constraint are ignored during the empty test. Here, we have two triangulations of a points on the grid. On the left, a Delaunay triangulation, and on the right, a constrained Delaunay triangulation. We observe that the minimal angle in the constrained Delaunay triangulation has decreased, which is not surprising because the Delaunay triangulation maximizes this angle. One way to try to improve the minimal angle is to have a Delaunay triangulation with the constrained edges being embedded. This is achieved by adding points on the constraint. The triangulation is then said to be a conforming Delaunay triangulation. Unfortunately, this is not sufficient to have a guarantee on the minimal angle, as you can see here. One way to circumvent that is to add some vertices inside faces, and this is how the Delaunay mesh refinement works. Given an input polygon, the constrained Delaunay triangulation is computed, and then this triangulation is made conformal. Then, as long as the minimal angle is larger than the user threshold, the center of the circumcenter of the triangle with this angle is inserted into the triangulation. This procedure is guaranteed to terminate if the threshold is at most 20.7 degrees. Extending a bit this algorithm, we can control the size of the elements. On the first example, only the minimal angle is used as a target. In the second example, a maximum edge size is requested. And in the third example, the size is assigned using a sizing field. The user can provide seed points to indicate which regions are of interest. This will allow the algorithm to not optimize any triangle in a region without seed point. To improve the minimal angle, but also the general distribution of angles, it is possible to run a Lloyd optimization procedure that will iteratively move vertices to the centroid of the Voronoi cells. On the following example, you can see that the more iteration we do, the more the distribution of angle is centered around 60 degree ang angles and the more its deviation is reduced. To conclude, here is a 2D snippet showing the code needed to generate a 2D triangle mesh. You start by the standard include and type definition, then you create your triangulation. You can insert your point constraints and seed points to define the domain that you want to mesh. Your mesh criteria with the constraint on the angle and the element size. And then you, call, you can call the free function that will refine the constraint triangulation with your own uh, criteria. Let's now move to the 3D case. The method explained in 2D does not directly generalize this to the 3D case. This is because a 3D constraint Delaunay triangulation does not exist without the addition of extra vertices in the, in the triangulation. This has some consequences on the minimal angle. 
instead we have another procedure for the 3d mesh generation that i'm going to quickly explain here let's say we have this elephant and we would like to generate a fetoidal mesh out of it what we are doing is taking some points on the surface of the elephant then compute the Delaunay triangulation and we say that we have theta hydra that are in our mesh if the center of the circumscribing sphere is inside the elephant so here i'm taking a few points and the mesh you can see on the right is a theta hydra mesh of the elephant then i'm looking at faces which are on the boundary of my mesh and i'm checking whether I'm satisfied with the approximation of the elephant I have. Clearly, it's not a good approximation. So, what I'm doing is I'm inserting the intersection of the dual of the boundary facets with my elephant inside the triangulation and repeat the procedure for, se for selecting phytohydra that are part of my mesh. So, here is an extra is R an extra round of iterations again some iterations and I'm continuing this process until I'm satisfied with the quality of my mesh if we want to summarize the algorithm in a few lines it consists of the following loop you pick the worst surface facet you insert the intersection of this dual with the surface you want to generate a mesh from. You update the marks on the, on the phytohydra that are inside or outside of your surface. And you repeat that until all surface facets are good. Using this procedure, you can both generate a phytohydral mesh, but also a surface triangle mesh that we are calling a Dolony triangulation restricted to your surface. How do we decide if a facet is bad? We said that a facet is bad if it is too large or if it is badly shaped or if the approximation error is too large. The approximation error is computed by computing the distance from the triangle to the intersection of the dual of the triangle with the surface. This algorithm can generate meshes from various input domains. You can generate meshes out of images, polyhedral surfaces, and we have an ongoing work to generate meshes out of NURB patches. Let's go over all the different kinds of domains we can mesh. Here, I'm giving the example for meshing an implicit function. In this case, I'm creating a domain which consists of a function that defines a sphere. It is defined here using a lambda function. Then, I can impose my criteria on the mesh. As you can see, this is uh, quality on the face angle that will give give me the shape of the sphere as well as the face size and the distance to the input function and then I pass all that to the function generating the mesh what if I want to specify a specific sizing field for the theta hydra? I can define the class that for every point that I want to insert in the mesh, point P, will return a value depending on the position in the sphere and this value will tell, will tell me the size of, theta, of the theta hydra, which is why on the following example you have different sizes of theta hydra depending on the distance to the center of the sphere. 
Here, we would like to generate a mesh from surfaces extracted from a 3D image. We start by defining the, a general sizing field, which is 8 in this case. And then we had some specific requests for the kidney, which is set here to this value 3. Then, as before, we set our criteria and then ask for the function generating the mesh to generate the mesh from the domain and the criteria. All the domains that we saw for now were smooth and did not contain any sharp features. In the case of domain with sharp features that the user would like to have in the output mesh, it was not possible in the initial mesh refinement algorithm to have them. This was solved in 2007 by the introduction of protecting balls. The Delaunay triangulation is replaced by a weighted version and the hedges that must be preserved are covered with balls. As you can see here on the left, you have a domain where sharp features are not protected. And as you can see, the mesh is not what the user would expect. After adding the protecting balls on the edges to be preserved, you can see on the right the, re the mesh result. Let's look at an example of meshing an implicit function with some 1D features that we would like to preserve. On the left, you see the output of the mesh generation process without adding any feature. And on the right, the result when some protection has been added on the sharp features. This is achieved by sampling the circle intersection between the two spheres in this function. Then the feature is added into the domain. Let's have a look at another type of implicit function. Here we have a 3D point set that is representing a 3D object that has been scanned. What we would like to do is to extract from this point set a triangle mesh that represents that object. This can be achieved by computing a Poisson implicit function that approximates this point set and this implicit function can be meshed using the mesh generation algorithm just described. As you can see, even if there are some missing points in the surface, the implicit function allows to close the surface. There is even a two-pass version of this algorithm to improve the quality of the output mesh when there are some large holes. Another type of implicit function that can be meshed is the distance function to a polygon mesh. This can be used to generate offset surfaces with positive or negative offset values. Note, however, that no detection of sharp features in the output will be done, so they will not be protected, except, of course, if they are provided by hand. Here is another type of improved domain. We have a 3D image representing some salt in the ground, and we would like to mesh a particular ISO value in uh, this mesh. On the right, you can see the result of uh, meshing a particular level set in this image. And here is a comparison of what the Delaunay mesh refinement is doing compared to a marching cube that is using an oak tree for extracting the surface of a particular ISO level set. The main issue with Martian Cube is that it's using a regular grid and the output has to contain small elements even when it's not needed, for example in the flat part of, of, the, of the surface. Whereas the Delaunay mesh refinement is able to use a size of triangle which depends on the local error, which is usually where the curvature is while on the flat part, only large elements are used. 
Here is the output of another type of input domain. The input is a segmented 3D image. It means that the different tissues has been identified and are assigned segment IDs. Those segment IDs are then put into the pixels of the image. The mesh generation algorithm is able to process this segmented image to generate a fitahedral mesh that will have facets at the interface between different segments, making the same meshes of adjacent segments sharing the same interface triangles. Let's compare this procedure with the marching cube one. Interface surfaces are each first mesh with triangles, then simplified and possibly remesh to have good quality elements. Then a fitahedral mesh must be generated for each segment, and all those meshes must be merged to have a global fitahedral mesh with compatible interfaces between segments. While with the Deloni mesh refinement, at each step of the refinement, we have a fitahedral mesh with those properties, as both surfaces and volumes are meshed at the same time. Let's consider the case of input domains defined by polyhedral surfaces. The mesh generation procedure can be used to generate from a triangle mesh with boundaries a new triangle mesh respecting user criteria for the triangles. Here, a uniform sizing field, for example. It can generate a fitahedral mesh of a volume bounded by a closed triangle mesh. It can generate a fitahedral mesh of a volume having surfaces in its interior such that those surfaces are represented by facets in the mesh. It can handle polyhedral complexes with interfaces being preserved. In this example, we have a polyhedral complex that consists of three volumes. The mesh generation procedure will generate a fitahedral mesh with the interface between the volume corresponding to facets. If the input contains some sharp features, it is important to protect them if the user wants them in the output. In this example, the input domain is on the left and in red you see the sharp features. If they are not protected, the output will not contain them. If the user wants to have them in the output, he simply have to provide the set of edges to protect and an algorithm will automatically compute the placement of protected balls that will guarantee the edges to be preserved. If the user requires the output surface to be manifold, it is important to specify it to the meshing function. Here, as you can see on the 2D illustration, the volume is pinched, generating non-manifold edges and vertices on the bounding surface. Once the manifold flag is set to on, those artifacts disappear. However, note that the input must be a two manifold and sharp features must be protected in order for the meshing procedure to terminate and be able to provide the expected result. Here are some pictures of a work in progress which is a joint work of Inria and Geometry Factory to generate a mesh out of a set of nerve patches. The difficult part here is that the patches are not conformal at their boundary and either needs to be trimmed or have some gaps to be filled. I would like to add a warning about the initialization of the mesh triangulation. If the input has many connected components, it is important that each connected component has at least four points on them so that they are correctly meshed and not missed by the meshing procedure. Similarly, if the domain to be mesh contain some small features, it is important to have enough point on the small features so that they are not forgotten. Even if the Dolony triangulation maximizes the minimal angle, it does not mean that no small angle is created. Some bad elements might be created by the Dolony mesh refinement process. Those bad elements, called slivers, are fit hydra that are almost degenerate, having small and large theodoral angles. You can see here the best theory of slivers. In order to remove those bad elements, we can apply some global optimization procedure. The refinement that consists in adding extra vertices breaking the slivers. The Lloyd smoother that, like explained in the 2D case, moves vertices toward the centroid of their volumenal cell. 
the OLED smoother, that stands for optimal Delaunay triangulation, that is also moving vertices at optimal locations. After having applied some global optimizations, some local optimizations can be used. The exuder chases the remaining sliver by reweighting mesh vertices with optimal weights. The perturber improves the mesh by local changes in the vertex positions, aiming to make slivers disappear. When both are combined, you can see on this example that the minimum angle is increased while the maximum angle is decreased. The deviation of the distribution of angles is also reduced. As we saw, Seagal provides several classes for meshing different kinds of input domains. But what if you are interested in yet another type of domain? The meshing procedure interacts with the user data through two means, the quality criteria and the, and the domain. The criteria indicates if a facet or a fitedra is bad. The domain is defined by answering whether a segment intersects the boundary of the domain and by answering whether a point is in the domain. You'll, you will also need to be able to compute the intersection point of a segment with the boundary of the domain. With those user classes defined, the mesh algorithm will then be able to generate a mesh corresponding to the input data. To illustrate this, let's see how we can develop a hybrid domain that will consist in the union of a polyhedral domain and an implicit function. Here is the pseudocode for meshing an implicit function, similar to what we saw earlier. Now, we can define the isIn domain function for that hybrid domain as follows. We first check if the point is in the sphere by simply forwarding the call to the implicit function domain, and if not, we do the same with the polyhedral domain. If it's not in any, then it is outside. Note that we used different indices so that we have different subdomains. Since the first check done is whether the point is in the sphere, this implies that the sphere surface will be fully meshed and we will have an interface between the sphere and the cube that will be meshed too. We could have had a third subdomain by considering points that are both in the sphere and in the cube. In such a case, the whole cube would have been mesh also. To conclude on the Delaunay mesh refinement procedure, note that Seagal also provides a way to mesh periodic domains. Here, we have a domain that repeats along the three Cartesian axes. All the functionalities described before are available and the mesh generated can be traversed infinitely while not duplicating the mesh structure. The removal of boundary condition is particularly interesting, for example, for simulation in material science. In the last part of this talk, I will introduce you to a new package that will be available in the next release of Seagal, the isotropic fitahedral remeshing package. It takes as input a fitahedral mesh and it will try to improve the quality of the mesh elements by atomic operations in the underlying triangulation. Those operations are intertwined by smoothing and projection operations. This package can handle and preserve multi-domains, boundaries and features. Since these are atomic local operations, at each step of the algorithm, the mesh and as well as its attributes are valid. Let's take the example of this input tetrahedral mesh of an elephant model. After applying two iterations of the algorithm, we can see that the distribution of diagonal angles is now centered around the regular diagonal angle, and that the minimal angle increases while the maximum angle decreases. As it is an isotropic remesher, the size of the elements is now uniform. This package is particularly interesting to overcome some of the restrictions of the Delaunay mesh refinement. Let's look at the following model. If we look at this particular location, we can see that the Delaunay mesh refinement generated clusters of small elements. The new isotropic remeshing package achieved to eliminate those clusters while preserving the shape of the domain. On the following view, we can better understand one cause of the presence of clusters of vertices. 
In the input, two sharp features are close together. As the mesh refinement does preserve both the topology and the sharp features of the mesh, while still maintaining the Delaunay property, a lot of vertices are needed. Since the new remesher does not need to maintain the Delaunay property, it can simplify those clusters. Let me finally mention here that if you want to remesh a triangle mesh, you can either use the Delaunay refinement procedure that I described, followed by some fitahedral isotropic remeshing step if needed, or you can use one of the two other available packages. The isotropic remeshing function in the polygon mesh processing package is a surface remesher that iteratively applies atomic operations on the triangle to make the triangle mesh evolve to, the match, to match the input criteria. If you are interested in only reducing the complexity of the mesh, you also have the possibility to use the surface mesh simplification package with all the possible options it provides. To conclude this session, we saw that Seagal offers generic frameworks to generate 2D and 3D meshes that can be fine-tuned to answer the different user needs, both in terms of input and in terms of quality. I invite you to visit the documentation of the packages mentioned for more examples and for more details on the various methods introduced.